My name's Mark Goodyear, and for once you can actually see as well as hear what's on Radio 1 FM. It is good to see you, Mark. And are we ready to try out this new 3D stereo sound? Yes, we are. And the idea is to let you at home or in your car judge for yourself. Just check this out. Well, viewers in some parts of the country may already be watching BBC One TV with NICAM stereo sound. But if you've got an ordinary TV and can also pick up Stereo Radio One, turn your TV sound down and settle down between your speakers as we try out 3D stereo. Well, the music industry has tried it before. It was called quadraphonic and it needed two speakers in front of you and two behind. It didn't take off. Perhaps it was too expensive. But the idea is still around and still a good idea. If you look on a regular ghetto blaster, there's often a wide stereo button. In fact, yeah, that's right. There's a, that's a much simpler version of what we're going to try, which uses just the two channels of normal stereo and you need no extra equipment at home. Right, first, let's test your system. Now, this sound should come only from your left speaker. And this one from the right. Now here's the start of our signature tune in normal stereo, where the sound seems to come only from between the speakers. OK, and now for the first time ever in 3D stereo, which should sound a lot wider. trumpet and some of the strings and synthesizer sounds clearly moving around so they, they do seem to be coming from well outside the speakers over here and there. Mark, Mark, how do they sound to you? It sounds very, very different. I mean, some of it sounds to be coming over my left shoulder. <laughs> Kate, I know you were an engineer at Radio 1. Can you explain how it works? Well, like ordinary stereo, it's just an illusion designed to fool the brain. The effect is added in at the recording studio. Now, I've got here the original recording of our signature tune. Now, if I fade up this horn here, the sound comes from right in between the speakers, so obviously there isn't actually anything there. But if I make it slightly louder on the right-hand side, then the brain thinks the sound is coming from slightly over to the right. I can make it come from completely over to the right there. Well, in pop music, all the instruments are separately recorded and then they're positioned like that so that they seem to fill the space between the speakers. But this new controller can move the sound even further than that because it doesn't only adjust the volume but also the time at which the sound arrives at each ear. For example, if a sound reaches my right ear just before my left ear, my brain will assume the source of that sound is nearer my right ear and place it somewhere out over to the right. So I can now move the sounds around in space. I think we can demonstrate it with the horn here. Now let's see, that's in the middle at the moment, but if I just put it over towards the left there, now I'll take it round to the right. Oh, it's gone away. It should come back in a moment. There it is, round to the right, and now even further, round beyond the speaker. It should be quite effective if, if we have a go on the synthesizer. Let's see what that sounds like. That over to the right first. And now let's put that over, move it round on the left. What do you think then, Mark? Well, I think the music business has always been very keen on new gadgets and new technology, so bands and record producers will have a field day playing with this. <laughs> In practice, it is more complex because the processor varies other factors apart from just the time. It's been programmed from experiments in how the brain interprets real sounds, so it can even fool the brain into believing that some of the sounds might be coming from right behind you. That's right, the system is also used in a video game here, and this is soon to be released on CD. And the idea of the music here is to just let you feel as if you're right in the middle of all this action. Oh, 
All right, well, Mark, what do you think the, the best sorts of music to, to benefit from this effect? <laughs> that's quite amazing. It sounds like the effect of flying around your head. That's Tim Simenon's Mega Blast. I think more subtly, Simple Minds are considering using it. And the Rolling Stones, I understand, for their next live album, are considering using it on some tracks. So you might end up thinking that you're in the audience when you listen to the album. Oh, good. I've always wanted to go to one of their gigs. <laughs> well, whether people will really go out and buy tracks because they are 3D stereo remains to be seen. But if you want to be one of the first to have it on CD, don't forget that we have a competition running. Uh, we're giving away a hundred of these special discs, which include all the 3D music that you've heard tonight. Now, last week, we asked you in what year were compact discs first introduced in this country. And as an extra clue, this piece of music was one of the first to be released on CD that year. Well, they don't come more familiar than, than that. Don't write to us, though but do write to the address in the current issue of the Radio Times. Thanks a lot, Mark. Enjoy the rest of your show. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure, and uh, we'll see how long the technology takes to actually pick up and become successful. And meanwhile, we'll continue the experiment on Radio 1. Kick, 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 kicking in with Radio 1 on FM. Evenings on 1. It's serious.